Okay, so this is going to be a painting video uh, for Sky Tear, my first character, which is Saikoshi. So he's kind of like jump bounding off what looks like bounding off a treasure chest, which is a bit interesting. I never quite understood that, um, but it's quite cool. Um, but he's got some kind of like molten powder in his satchel, so we're going to have to somehow do that. I mean, it's being modelled in a way that suggests that anyway, which is quite cool. It's been uh, undercoated in Wraithbone spray, Citadel Wraithbone. So we're gonna go over with contrast paints and we're gonna see how he comes out. So we've got a bit of white areas uh, to go for first. As always, we're gonna go light colors first uh, to darker colors. Um, we will see, we may use a bit of um, contrast medium. But I don't think we need to with this particular... Uh, we might mix uh, some greys to do with his trousers, but we'll see. So we're going in with the white first of all. I've got my size zero brush as per normal. Um, and then we're going to do these... His forearms first. Now I'm going to be posting a solo playthrough of Sky Tear using the rule set that they've put on their website. And again, when you first put Apothecary White on, it looks really quite dark as a gray, but it does dry lighter, which you will see. So I'm just doing his shirt here. It's nice it's white, makes life easier for me. Now let's put him away so that we keep focus on the painting. Um, and then we've got the other sleeve, of course. Uh, da, 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 da. Tip that there. And then the white continues down here. Again, it doesn't matter too much if you get the uh, the white over certain areas. Uh, the the darker shades of colour will uh, sh certainly go over them if you get it on the pants or pants. I'm not American. If you get them on the uh, trousers, uh, it won't matter too much. And up to there. Okay. And you can already see that, that that will give this idea of contrast, which is the whole point of the paints, right? Uh, I'm going to try and just do one coats, which is what, what, what I tend to do with most of my painting. And that's the Apothecary White. Now we're done. So from Apothecary White, it would make sense to go to the skin. Because, uh, you know, he hasn't got many colours, which is quite nice. Uh, I'm going to go in with the usual uh, Gilliman Flesh for the skin. If I can find that term. What's that? Oh, I forgot about that. Gilliman Flesh. Sorry, I didn't show it before. This was Apothecary White. Make sure you give it, especially the Apothecary White, a good shake before you use it. Get the pigment shaken up into the solvent. Okay, so I've got to be a little bit careful with uh, where the the paint is wet because uh, I don't want it to bleed into the white shirt. So I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to start with the hands. And again, so if you've been watching some of my videos before, you'll know that I've talked about uh, Ludus Magnus Games uh, Black Rose Wars and the uh, miniatures that came in the Sator box. Absolute phenomenal miniatures. Uh, absolutely love them. But a uh, big, big dis disadvantage is that the paint doesn't stick to the miniatures. So it, it must be some kind of re residue or something that was left from the, uh, the, the printing process. Uh, I don't know. 
Um, but it got so frustrating that I've actually given up trying to paint those oops, trying to paint those miniatures at the moment. Um, it's, it's got that it got to that point where it was so bad that it put me off painting the miniatures themselves. Uh, I will get back to them. Um, I'm going to need to get some Dettol because apparently if you get some Dettol or some sort of solvent, I guess. Uh, methylate spirits or something will probably do the job as well uh, then you can actually get rid of the residue and it should work um, but it, it's absolutely horrendous it's uh, like water phobic um, when you put water phobic stuff on um, on washing or whatever it might do like water repellent it's exactly like that with paint it's really annoying now is that dry enough I'm going to say so it is. He has got, whoops, he has got black hair, so I'm not too fussed about getting on his hair as such. There we go. Maybe a bit more. My neck. So I keep tapping the, uh, the camera mount there. Okay, so that's the skin tone done. Again, it will dry lighter. So it should come out, oops, it should come out really nice. I've just got some on there, that's all right. The turquoise should. Uh, I've got that. Now, <laughs> this is so good. Um, I've got this colour called Achillean Green, which is actually like a bluish turquoise. It is pretty much going to be that colour. <laughs> so I've pretty much got the perfect colour to do his top with, which is <laughs> pretty lucky, to be completely honest. Now, on the ground, we've got these coins. I presume they're coins that have come from the treasure chest. Um, and we've got this flooring. I think I'm just going to hit the flooring with some silicon and grey. Um, and just have it very standard, very, very neutral. Okay, so let's move on to this. And you'll see what I mean by the colour when I put it on. It's, uh, it's literally made for this miniature's art. Now, I'm being a bit careful because the red will probably not go over this, uh, not so well. Um, and I've just gone over the white. That will definitely not work. So just get get water on your brush. Contrast paints don't like water. And then just get that paint off. There we go. Make sure you dry your brush before you put it back into the paint. Let the bristles of the brush do the work for you. So get underneath. And again, as with pretty much all my painting, it doesn't, I'm not going for a whiz bang. Now that looks like it's, hmm, I'd say it's part of the red sash there, which is slightly different to the art but that's fine um okay and then we go back up to here it's got a, yeah, it's got a, really nice um really nice model actually in terms of quite really quite clear to see where the um where the detail is um really quite impressed uh what was i going to say yeah um I'm not going in for any competitions with these. These are literally just to get them looking relative standard on the board, um, better than gray plastic, of course, um, and just utilizing Citadel's contrast paints to, to their max, really.
and you know i just love working with these just seeing these these immediate results just happening before your eyes it's it really was a revelation when i first started using them here might have got a bit over there might just drag that across actually there we go. what he's a, he's a really quite a cool miniature quite a dynamic pose I think this is still in the shot. Um, it's a bit too much paint on that one. Get rid of some of the paint on there. And as I said, I'm not too worried too much if it goes slightly over where I'm putting the red. The red should hold its own. It's a strong color. And but for example, bits like that where I've just completely gone over it, I'm gonna let's do that now. So clean the brush. Get that water and then just try and take away that paint. I'll probably do it. That's thinned it down enough to. Uh, be all right, and we've got the rest of this on to do. Cool. And I think that's the turquoise done. So that's his, um, that's his jacket done. Uh, so we're going to let that dry off a little bit. While that's drying, I think we're going to go straight to the chest. Um, so being wood, I've got two different choices. I've got snake bite leather or I've got wild wood. I'm going to go in with wild wood. I think that's a, it's a nicer um, colour for, for the wood, as the name suggests. So we're going to go in with wild wood. Now it doesn't matter if I if I go over this bit, so I'm, I'm really not going to be too uh, worried about this. Um, not too careful because I'm going to be going in with the metal anyway. I'm just going through the whole lot. Pretty good, pretty happy with that. On this side, then the contrast paints do all the work for me. Okay, perfect. Right, is that done? Is the chest done? It's 
now we move on to probably the red detailing, I think, um, around the body. So want an, obviously a nice vibrant red, uh, which is this Blood Angels red, which comes out like this color. And you know, it's, uh, it's getting there. Right, so what we got red? Da, 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 da. This. Whoa, what did, when did I do that? I splodged red all over it. Oh man. Well, that was a mistake. I don't know. I can't. I must have just caught it. Obviously, that. Obviously, the bit that I'm going to be red, red doesn't matter. Uh, but this white is not ideal. In fact, I might have to redo that bit. That's so annoying. Whoops. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to get. Wow, I didn't. I did not see that at all. Oh well, that's what happens when you're not paying attention. So you can see that we got some. I should be alright. That's that's hardly noticeable at all. Right, without splashing it everywhere, uh, we're going to put the red detail. <laughs> Uh, so you see, uh, that's what I quite like about my videos. Uh, you see the mistakes and everything. <laughs> and that's that's the beauty of doing everything in real time. Does mean the videos are longer by quite a considerable amount, but um, at least you can see exactly how long things take to paint. And uh, if I make mistakes, what I do to rummy to them, you'll see in real time as if it was like a live stream. And I really like the contrast between these, the red and the turquoise blue. That's such a cool, I'll tell you what it is. It's partly to do with my camera melt. The, um, I keep hitting it with my, with my paintbrush, uh, but never mind. Okay, I'm happy with that. So let's go to the next. Peace. And look at that vibrancy of the red. Now you can do it like I'm doing with the <laughs> Kind of like painting around as the paint's drying. It can be a bit dodgy. Uh, you can you can uh, get a bit of bleeding into the different colors if you're not careful. Um, just try and do it in an order like I've done. That means that one side is dry by the time you get to the other one. is nearly that one done. Just need to be that tiny bit there. There we go. So that's that one done. Uh, we'll do... We're not doing that detail, of course, until that literally the rim. Uh, but we can certainly do in between now. And as you see, the colour is fine. It gets through that, that turquoise well enough.
be a little bit careful towards these, um, the white, obviously, as that will make the biggest difference. The holder really does help to stabilize the miniature and be able to rotate and get into good good angles as well. So I highly recommend it if you don't use one. Is one of these, uh, sit, well, it doesn't have to be sit there, but one of these miniature holders. Other people use lots of makeshift stuff. Uh, right, where's this? It looks like quite a large area is gonna be red. So I think, do, 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 do. Let's have a little look and see if I can figure out. Yeah, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do all of... I'm just going to look at some... Yeah, I'm going to say quite a bit of this leg is going to be red. From about there. Down, 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 all the way to about here. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Now again, this is going to go with the dark, a uh, kind of dark grey. Um, so not the end of the world. Although red's a very strong pigment, very hard to go over with contrast paints. happy with that just a bit more there right okay let's do the other ankle where's this basically this stuff here and going around here And of course, you can use these techniques um, and the ideas that, of how I paint with any miniature. Um, you just need the wraith bone spray. That's I would say that's kind of essential for a contrast painting. It gives such a nice um, tone to all your contrast paints. Um, angles done and uh, you can already see starting to come really along now as we get these immediate effects happening right I'm gonna to go to a smaller brush to do other bits I'm just gonna do his headband with this brush um, because it's uh, again we're going black aren't we oops sweet yeah, really cool. Right. Um, okay, let's put the red away for now. We're probably going to need to use it for the, well, no, it's going to be lava patch, going to be the oranges and yellows um, with this black to help with that. Right, so next we've got to think about um, her... Let's do the, oh sorry, I shouldn't have put the red away because now we need to go to uh, a smaller brush. So my Kalinske, it's about a triple zero brush uh, to do the detail of the red. Starting with the 
thrust in here. Oh, what just happened? Nothing. Okay, that's fine. Um, right, let's do the uh, this this edging. So just using kind of edge kind of edge highlighting really. Um, to get these colors on. Um, <laughs> might be a bit better to kind of go in a little bit. This is a little bit of detail work. get under there we don't want that to be white <laughs> so if my hands in the way I'm just doing this while well, I'm doing this really fine Finer detail, I need to um, get into angle where I can see properly. In the expense of the camera, I'm afraid. But hopefully it's showing enough. Doing. Perfect. Right, the the trim around the blue next. Now, because I've actually done that blue, that's not going to come up quite as well. Hmm. I'm okay with that. I think. It's okay. It's okay. It's not vibrant red, I think, for this trim. Yeah. Perhaps you could definitely argue that's not ideal. Uh, you can definitely argue that's not ideal, but I, I think I'm happy enough. I should have um, been more careful on that part. I, I didn't actually realize that was a red trim. Now, I could go back over with white here. Um, but I'm not too, I'm really not that fast. So if you want it to be a bit better, you could, uh, you could either when you're painting the Achillean green, which is the kind of blue really, uh, just make sure you're, um, going only go, only go into this trim and not going over it. And you can see here what happens if you try to paint over some contrast paints with other contrast paints. Is it you may not get the desired effect you want uh, because effectively a little bit like uh, watercolors. I've said this many times before. So a little bit like watercolors in the sense that they um I don't think that's that's too bad uh, to be honest. It's not it's not great. I will I will I will agree. It's it kind of it's like a dull thing. Um, but yeah. Oh, well. So you may want to think about that when you do yours. So, yeah, that was a mistake, I would say. It's better than what it looks like on the camera, to be fair. It doesn't look anywhere near as dark as that in real life, rather than the camera. That looks really bad on the camera, but it's not that bad, honestly. Okay, well, I think that's all the red done. So, with now the detail of the red work done... Which is good. 
we can move on, just make sure I've got this completely clean. I will of course wash it afterwards as well. Perfect. Uh, so let's move on to the hair, I think, next. So we're gonna go in with Black Templar. Such a good color for the contrast range because um, if you ever try to uh, do shading and stuff with black, normally what you would kind of do is go in with a very dark gray, um, a bit of null oil perhaps, a wash, and then uh, then you would highlight with varying degrees of gray to get a really good effect. Whereas this kind of does it all for you. <laughs> it's, it, you know. I, I think I love the look of the Black Templar contrast paint. I think it's uh, it's brilliant. But you know, each their own. Some people don't like it. I can't actually see. I uh, missed a bit of a red there, so that's going to have to be touched up. Just trying to get... Pretty happy with that. That's a pretty cool haircut, man. I love that. There we go. And suddenly that's outlined his face. And now he's really coming along. And you can see how that apothecary white is now dulled down. It's, especially when you compare it to other colors, it looks absolutely fine. Yeah. Okay, uh, other blacks, no, no other blacks. Um, now this gray, if you have a look at the gray, I think I'm just gonna go in straight gray, actually. Change my mind, I'm not gonna mix it up, I'm just gonna go straight in with the Basiliconum Gray. Uh, another really kind of essential color for the range. Um, if you want a grey, <laughs> this is, look no further. Uh, this is a a great colour to use. The This is really good for stone work as well. Uh, fantastic for stone work. Uh, the, a bit of wraith bone, a bit of this, and you're done. Um, is it as good as some of the other um, stuff you can... Hang on, sorry, give me two seconds. Mm, yeah, pretty happy with that. Sorry. Um, is it as good as, like, using uh, some different washes and then dry brushing and then dry brushing? different shades of gray on. No, of course not. Um, but if you want a, a kind of just instant effect, decent, and what I call decent stone effect, then this is all you need to do. Um, but the trousers are quite stonish looking, I suppose. Uh, this is what drew me to it. Mm -hmm. 
Now is that? Oh yeah, that's fine. So this is all part of the trousers there. So I don't have to worry too much. Let's try and get in there. Look at all the folds. That's what contrast paints love, textured detail. And uh, <laughs> this miniature in particular, I don't know if the others are going to be the same. Hopefully so. Um, these have got it in bundles. I mean, look at these trousers. They're just loving it. Loving the contrast paints. It's awesome. Yeah, pretty happy with that. I think I might have missed a tiny bit there. Just pull away some of the paint there, and that looks pretty good. Now I do the shoes in the same. Fortunately, the uh, pot lid is uh, not keeping it open, which is always annoying with Citadel paints and I've seen quite a few people um, put replace them into dropper bottles which uh, it's not a bad shout actually uh, the only problem with the only problem with doing I mean that would be fine with uh, normal paints but with contrast paints the only problem I feel with doing that is that you have to pour them out and the point with contrast paints you don't mix them at all so with water, like uh, you can obviously thin them down, you can mix them with other contrast colors. I'm not saying that, but so I just don't see how that would work with dropper bottles. You'd have to keep dropping it out into to use them, as it were. All right, is that meant to be? Uh, I think I missed a bit of red there. But to be honest, I think we're going to do stonework over all of this. So this is all going to be, um, whoops, basilicon and grey anyway. Just not to the paint. So I think we're going to do that now. So I'm going to do all this basilicon and grey, and then I can do the gold bits as well. But just look how cool that is. It's just a one coat, and then suddenly the boots are... Oh, done. Uh, yeah, let's do the base while we're here, while we've got the paint out. So just going to go in. <laughs> Some more paint up in the pot there. Oh, now looking at the art, it looks as though that is actually not stone, and it's molten, like a molten red. Huh. Huh. Oh, he's obviously on the molten. Okay, let's let's change that up then. So we need to re redo, redo what, or undo the work we just did. So I'm going to use a bit of kitchen roll to. Try and get most of it. And I'm probably going to get the shoe while I'm doing this, so I'm going to have to go back over that very quickly. But a decent amount of water on here and just start to take away this paint. That probably does. That'll do. Um, then let's have a little look, see how we're doing. No, I don't think I did catch the foot there, so that's fine. Oh, I'm pretty happy with that. Right, okay. So, uh, scrapping that, because we're going to do it slightly different. Um, I think we'll do the shuriken, the bag, and the floor next. So we're going to need some Ayandan yellow. And we're also going to need some Griff Hound Orange. to do these effects.
what I'm looking for is this, this kind of, this effect. Okay, so I in yellow first of all, and I'm gonna use two brushes to do this. Because I'm gonna have them both open at the same time, which could be a disaster for spilling. Um, we will see, but at least their pots lids open, so we can do that. And um, what I'm going to do is just go over the whole lot with a bit of yellow, with a fair amount of yellow, just over the whole base. Now, if you've seen any of my other painting videos, I've done some similar effects before where we want to get it when. It's, it's not dry. So while it's still wet, I'm gonna mix in some of this orange and then we're gonna go over the top of it with uh, the black. Well, actually, I don't need to close that. And I actually don't need another brush at the moment because uh, we can just use this now. So we're gonna start to bleed in some of this orange and to the top parts here. Again, don't worry too much about the coins areas because um, I'm going to be going over those with uh, metal anyway. But just picking up the kind of the, the raised parts with the uh, with the orange. Okay, there we go. So let's do the same over on the bag. And we'll just do it all, literally just put this yellow on all of it to start with. How long are we on? 42 minutes, that's not bad at all, is it? Uh, and might as well just do the shuriken while we're, while we're at it. Flaming shuriken. Shuriken. Okay, and now we'll go to our orange. And we'll do a kind of like a, I guess, splodge there. And then a little bit of like splodge, 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 splodge. And just do kind of a little bit like so. That's good enough. I think they've got enough yellow showing through there. I'm trying to get the orange in there in a minute. Here we go. And then on the shuriken, we're just going to do these on the on the edges of these, it's like the the points, I guess. Not the thumb itself, I can help it. There we go. So that'll do the shuriken. I'll leave a tiny bit of blodging like that. Oops. Okay, so that's the kind of lava effect, as it were, to a point. Let's put those aside. Obviously, got to wait for that to dry up the base. That's not going to happen anytime soon. Um, we do have the metal of the box to do, and we've got his eyes, of course, to do. Um, I don't think I'm going to do any other detail of his... Is it? That hand wasn't done very well, was it? Gone red right over that, never mind. Um, yeah, so I think we'll do eyes now while waiting for that other bits to dry, and I can focus on doing the rest. So, with the eyes, several ways you can do this. If you want them to have... Kind of black outline you can do it that way i don't i don't want black outline i want uh i want a bit of eyebrow action going on and i want to 
uh, try and get some white going as well. So I'm going to get the uh, ref bone base. So not pure white. I don't want Corax white or anything like that. To go for the pupils. So I'm just going to, oops, just going to bring forward a bit of a palette, which is an estate, by the way. <laughs> I do have to sort this palette out. It's horrendous. Okay. Right, so what we're looking at here, we don't want too much, obviously. Let's make sure we. Oh, wow, that was not meant to happen. Um, Oh, he's a classic. You know, um, really hard to do. Really hard to do, uh, especially to do well. I feel that's a pretty good eye. I mean, that's come out well. I'm lucky. <laughs> and then we needed... Um, I've got an insane brush to do the, uh, the proper detail work on that as well. Yeah, that's, that's, that's come out really well. You see, it's really starting to take shape now. Um, really easy to do as well. Maybe do. I'm gonna keep. I think I'll probably keep the red around the base. Um, although I've probably mullered it with my holder now. Okay, so we've got this dri dripping out the back. We're gonna use black to make sure we uh, uh, the black templar to make sure we do all bits like that. Which talk about black templar? Actually, where is that gone? Because I want to, oh, there is. I want to do the eyebrows while we're here. So getting that that small brush, I'd say triple zero probably something like that. I think it's lost a few bristles, so that's why it's. And then we're gonna do a eyebrow. I don't know, is that work? I think so. I mean, it's very hard to see them, to be fair. But I think that's given it a, yeah, a, a good enough. We need the Black Templar to do, obviously, the eyeballs. Which are always the hardest bit. Um, I think we're just going to carry on with the black uh, on the eyeballs. So let's, let's have a go at that now, then. So, Black Templar again. It's nice as well using the black templar because it's um because it's, it's it's got that flow to it whereas like if you used black paint you'd have to make sure it's thin and you get like a one chance at it and then yeah we get it it's when i do this that i perhaps could do with i don't think i've got any on there did i that i could perhaps do with a magnifying glass of some sort Where is that brush tip? I've no idea. What's going on? Hmm. Saying that, <laughs> I don't seem to be getting a. Uh... Let me look at that. Let's try it again. Not using that one. I'm gonna to go to that slightly bigger brush. I think that's just mine's. I think it's called Psycho or something. And it's just. I think it's just lost lost bristles over the days, and now it's now it's rubbish. Cool. Oh. 
Ah. Can't say. That one's fine. Did I get that one? Yep, I'm pretty, I mean, I'm happy with that one, obviously. That was good. Uh, so that's fine. That's the only one you can really see. <laughs> okay. So yeah, my psycho's had it. It's just not taking any... It's not well, it's certainly not taking enough paint, if any. So forget that one. Okay. Uh, so with the face now done, um, we just need to do the metal. So let's do the metal on this video, because I think that's an important step to do. So we'll grab our amazing... <laughs> Um, oh dear, our amazing palette. Oh, this is disastrous. And this, uh, this paint pot's got a load of dry paint all over it. Let me get rid of that in a minute. It's better. Right, so uh, let's get my size zero. Get a decent blob of lead belcher. So we're using lead belcher for this. But any silver paint will do. Uh, let's get some water onto there, make it a little bit thinner. It's a bit too thick to start with. And um, what we're doing is picking up the metal details on the chest now. Is that there? No, that is. Be a little bit careful on the ground there. Don't really want a silver ground. So what they, these miniatures got some really, that was terrible. That was absolutely shocking. <laughs> See, you lose concentration for one second uh, to talk about something and then you just ruin it. Uh, so I got some meth, I got some of that lead belcher on the, on the wood, which isn't what I wanted. So bit of water, bit of brush, brush that off. We're all good. Back to we, back to the start again. Um, let's do this middle section. I was going to say the um, detail on this miniature is really good. It makes painting a lot easier. Uh, now we are going to go over this with basilica and grey, so don't worry, it won't be this bright in the final. Okay, cool. So that's the metal now done. And he's really coming along now. It just makes such a difference compared to just the gray plastic and just watching them go around on the board. I'm not gonna be doing any highlights, any washes on any of this. This is just, um, this is just uh, contrast paints. Uh, apart from the lead belcher, of course. On the metal now oh wait, we do need to do those coins is that dry enough probably not uh, i don't think that's quite dry enough on the base at the moment to be able to do that you don't even have to do the black detail of this lava i, I would say that's that's not a bad little effort as it is um i think the black will really make it look like la lava sorry and i want to do that before i do the gold coins of course as well um and I've just noticed with the grey, he's actually got slippers. But that's, it looks as only art, it's the same colour as the trousers. So I'm happy to keep that as is. So I'm just going to that a minute. Okay. So I think we'll do the black detailing next. So we need that black Templar back. 
and we've come out to 55 minutes, so we might be pretty much done in an hour, which is not bad at all. Quite happy with an hour. Uh, and then what we're going to do is just bring this black over the the, ra the raised kind of bits, where it's cooled down effectively. And then it'll be more, it'll be cooler towards the, um, towards the center of the, uh, of this stuff. I'm just trying to follow the the model the modeling on the base here. I put would it be yeah, probably with quite a fair amount of the of the gray in this part. So when I did Super Fancy Brawls Arquette, I'm trying to do a similar effect to what I did there. I think that would probably do it. I should give the effect of um, kind of magma as well. Let's do the same now for the uh, this thing. Uh, so again, kind of stippling. Because there'll be bits that you would see the um, the lava going through, and there'll be bits that wouldn't. The probably on the top. The probably probe. I might leave the top to show it kind of like oozing out. I don't know. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, let's just. Bit more around here, and then the shuriken. Uh, I don't, don't know, maybe maybe a red. I don't want to put black on the shuriken because it's not molten shuriken. It's like dipping it into that. That's what I'm imagining. He's dipping it into this bag and then throwing it, so it wouldn't have any like cooled down parts, I don't think. Um, maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Do the gold pieces, of course. Um, Wanting to go with the red or no? I'm gonna leave the shuriken as it is. 
Okay, uh, so let's go and do these gold coins then. So while I've still got this lead belcher still, I know it's gold, but as the lead belcher still um, still uh, wet, I'm gonna go in with that and pick out each coin. And we've gone a bit more quiet because, again, focusing on the individual coins. And that's them. Okay, so now the coins, you can kind of see them shining if I put them in that light. And to do gold, we've got choices here. I think I'm going to go with my usual way of just using like yand and yellow over the top of that and we've got to put the basilicum grey over that so let's start with the silver work first of all so put that away from that so basilicum grey and just go over all of the metal work and what this does is it gives it a contrast it makes it look real uh, sorry a lot more realistic um, instead of just a kind of like cheap silver plastic silver look that you want you want it to look authentic silver and let's go back to front because the transparency of uh, contrast paints the uh, silver will still come through, which is obviously very, very important. You want it to look silver, of course. You just don't want it to be so bright that it doesn't look realistic. Probably perhaps put a bit too much paint on those bits. Now, don't worry about getting it on Bits of the wood, it'll just look like aged wood, it'll look fine. Okay, perfect. Now the coins. It doesn't take long for your lead belcher to dry at all. Oh no. I've got yellow over my lovely white <laughs> um, <laughs> base. Uh, never mind. Okay, so then we touch each of these gold coins with the iron and yellow, and it basically makes gold because the metallic, the metallic nature of the lead belcher comes through on the lead on the lead belcher as gold. There we go. Have I done? I think I've done. And that's one hour and four minutes of total recording time. So this is the beauty of contrast paints. Um, I did no mixing, did no thinning down. Yeah, I did a bit of lead belcher to get uh, some bits going. Um, but that is purely done with contrast paints in an honest hour and four minutes. Um, I'm, not, I'm not a speed painter or anything like that. Um, oh, just forgot, nearly forgot. Get my detail brush. Just under the collar is a little bit of red that I've missed that was doing my name. Perfect. There we go. So just uh, as I go through, as I go round on the uh, camera, I spot things, and it's like, oh, really? Um, but there we go. Let's get let's get some a bit more light onto that if I can. So here we go. This is now you see there with the 
the eye. He's not actually looking forward, he's looking to the side, which is, you could argue, is a bit, a bit silly. Um, wow, he's not really, is he? Um, I've got his molten bag. He uses shuriken. And you can see that that base now is starting to come through pretty good. My problem is, I would have taken all the paint off. <laughs> Off these now uh, with the holder, so I probably, to be honest, I will probably go round um, with a black. I think around the edge of the base. I think, I think that'll look better. But there he is, there is Shukashi. Uh, completely done with contrast paints, and in about one hour of work in total. And there's the gold coins. Can you see them shining? It's just such a great technique to use with contrast paints. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, painting some slightly different miniatures there. Um, and this was Sky Tear, Shikoshi from Sky Tear, the core game. And join me next time for another painting video. If you like this, if you want to see some more Sky Tear, uh, please do like, subscribe, and make sure you comment on this video. So until next time, keep painting.